the product rule for exponents is a way to multiply expressions containing exponents. When you multiply the expressions, you need to make sure they have the same base. In this video, we're going to show you how to multiply terms like this, including helpful tips and notes to review from. Get the worksheet used in this lesson, as well as hundreds of others, at mathcation.com. This video is about using the product rule with exponents. Now the product rule is a way to multiply expressions containing exponents. You're going to use the product rule when multiplying two terms that have the same base. When using the product rule, you keep the base the same and then add the exponents. Okay, so in the case of, let's say, 3 squared or x squared, the bases are the numbers that are attached to the exponents. In this case, the base is 3, and then the x would be the other base in the second term. All bases are treated as like terms. In other words, only exponents that have the same base get multiplied together. So if you had like 3 squared times 4 to the third times 3 to the fourth, only the terms with the same base could get multiplied together. So only those two could actually get multiplied together. You could not include the four because the base is different. If a base does not have an exponent, then the exponent is one. So if you had three times three to the fourth, even though there's no exponent here, the exponent is one. And then the product rule is written as x to the a times x to the b is equal to x to the a plus b. Let's move on in our guided notes to some of our practice problems. Our first problem gives us 3 to the third times 3 to the fifth. Now if you look at this problem, we have a base of 3 in both terms. So these bases are going to be kept. So you're going to keep the base of 3. And then what you do with the exponents is that you add them. So this will be like saying we're going to keep our base of 3. And then we're going to do 3 plus 5. Because our exponent is 3. And our other exponent is 5. So we add those two together. And then of course 3 plus 5 is 8. So our final answer is 3 to the 8th power. Moving on to number 2, we have 5 to the 10th times 5. Now if you remember back in the notes, I told you guys that if you are given a term without an exponent, the exponent is 1. So once we add that in, which you don't technically have to add in, but we're going to add it in just to make sure we remember it, you do the same thing. We have our base of 5, so we're going to keep the base of 5, and then we're going to add 10 and 1 together. So it would be 5 to the 10 plus 1, which of course is 5 to the 11th. Jumping down to number 3, we have 7 to the 9th times 7 to the negative 4th. So once again we have our term, our so once again we have our base, which is 7, and then we need to add the exponents. Okay. Now when we add the exponents, we have to include everything in the exponent. So we have to include this negative. So it will be 9 plus negative 4. And then of course, 9 plus negative 4 is 5. So our answer is 7 to the fifth power. All right, number 4 gives us a base that is a Number 4 gives us a base that is a variable. So our variable here is a. And in the case of this base, just because it's a variable does not change the fact that you keep it. So we're going to keep our variable, which is a. And then we're going to add the exponents. So it will be 3 plus 5. So this is obviously a to the 8th power. Number 5 is similar to number 4 in that we have a variable as 
our base. So of course we keep the variable. Then we have exponents of 13 and negative 10. So because we're multiplying, we add the exponents together. And then of course, because this is negative, you must also include the negative over here. And then you do 13 plus negative 10, which is positive 3. Our last practice problem gives us two separate bases. And you will recall in our notes that if you have two separate bases, you multiply the two bases together that are alike. So in this case, we're going to multiply the x's together. So it will be x to the 3 plus 5 times, okay, and then you multiply the y's together, y to the 2 plus 4. Then when you write your answer, you have x to the 3 plus 5th, and that's x to the 8th, and then y to the 2 plus 4, which is y to the 6th. So that's going to be your final answer. If you found this video helpful, make sure you drop a like. Subscribe to our channel or check out our website for more premium math content. Thanks for watching.